Welcome. It's been six months and 10 days since I arrived in Thailand. The visa hassles to stay in Thailand have been way more than they should have had I planned better. However, to my own defense, a good friend of mine says you should never think about staying someplace before you put your boots on the ground and try it. The position I find myself now in relation to a Thailand visa is a result of my not wanting to commit before putting my feet on the ground. So let me tell you the little story about how I left the United States on July 4th, 2022, arrived July 5th in Bangkok, Thailand, and how my visa trail has went since then. I got here at 11.30 at night. It took all of three minutes to clear customs. No headache, no hassle. Showed them my COVID vaccinations, that I had COVID shots. Showed them my boarding pass, my passport, stamp. You get 30 days. That got me, I guess, till August 3rd. I knew that wasn't going to be enough. So you can extend that by another 30 days. So a few days after I got here, I found out where you had to go. And I took the morning went out there with my passport and asked for the extension, which they gave you another 30 day. And that got me to the point where I would be good probably through September 2nd. That was all well and good. Not too much hay, but 60 days isn't getting you much of any place. So it was very quick for me to realize I loved it here. I had done my research before I came. I thought I was going to love it here, but putting the boots on the ground, or in my case, gym shoes, really made a big difference. So the next step was I found out from someone on YouTube, which is why I give back with the information, that you could get an educational visa from a company that would teach you the Thai language. And it costs about 29,000 baht to get a one-year course from them, which was one and a half hour class twice a week online. And for that, they would go to the Ministry of Education and they would get you what was called an educational visa. And that took a little bit of doing and hassle, but that educational visa is really not for one year. It's for 90 days. Every 90 days, you would have to go back to them and get an extension for 90 days. And you'd have to go to them two weeks early and they'd have to take your passport and then they'd have to talk to the education department. And then you'd have to go out about a 45 minute drive to immigration and check in every 90 days with them to get your next 90 days updated on your educational passport. Which I side, this educational stuff, this 90 days going out there and back, that's a hassle. I looked into several options, but one of them was the attorney who's on YouTube all the time from Integrity Legal that does almost exclusively visas and that sort of thing. So I made an appointment. I have a video about that when I went out there to my appointment. I'll link to it in the description below. Talked to them, weighed all my options, and determined that I would probably be best with an O retirement visa. They said that their contact within immigration said, Let's renew your educational visa. And then about two months into the visa or around January, we're going to transfer your educational visa to an O visa. Great. Sounds easy. Just costs a lot of money. That's all. So I paid a, a good chunk of money and uh, the actual O visa doesn't cost all that much. But to have an attorney do everything for you does which is good by me because I want it done right and I didn't want to hassle. We come to January and we're going to do it. And all of a sudden, a new head of Thailand's immigration was appointed to run the show here. And as with all things in January, everything must change. So they would no longer transfer an EDU visa to an O retirement visa directly. They just refused to do it. The only way I could do it was to get out of the EDU visa, which proved to be a little bit more of a pain. 
they said, well, you can drive to Pattaya and from Pattaya, you can take a four hour van trip to the border and they'd have an Asian escort you across the border and then right back in because there's people that do that. But that's like six hours in a car and then six hours back in a car, not fun. So I talked to the attorney, I said, look, why don't I just take a direct flight out of the country to the capital of Laos, which is Vietian, Vietian, which I butcher the name of all the time. And I'll fly there and then I'll just fly back. They said, that's okay, go ahead and do that. But they were sweating bullets that they would let me out of my EDU visa and come back in on a regular tourist visa, which nowadays isn't 30 days, it's 45 days that you can get when you come in as a regular tourist. So if you're coming from the United States right now and you wanna do a little vacation, you can come in the gate and boom, they'll just give you 45 days right away no hassles, no restrictions, no COVID tests needed. They don't check any of that stuff. Welcome Americans, come on over, have a great time. Which sounds good. So on January 16th, I decided Martin Luther King Day, I was not doing anything. So I decided I would take a trip to Laos and get this visa handled and get back onto a tourist visa. So I documented the trip and I'm gonna show you a little bit of that trip now and explain to you all that happened and all the hassles and all the things that went smooth and all the unusual things I saw on the rest of this video. Now, I know I've been a little slow and deliberate on this, but unless you've been to Thailand, I would never recommend anybody just go and jump for an old retirement visa. First thing, if you come here on a regular 45 day visa and you spend the 45 days and then you could extend that by 30 and spend 30 days, that's 10 weeks. If within the first six weeks, you say, hey, I really like it here, then I'd say, hey, go get a, a retirement visa, one that suits your needs. I didn't do that. My inexperience, I thought that this would be great. I didn't really like the classes I was taking. I'm still studying Thai, but I'm doing it on my own terms more than on theirs. I just didn't like the teacher. I didn't think she was a very good teacher. I'm still learning and I'm getting better every day, but you don't have to go to the school to get it. And to be honest, I just burned that money going to the school for a little bit of time. But hey, mistakes happen. And in business, mistakes cost money. I'm making these videos not for me. I'm not trying to be monetized. I'm not trying to make money on YouTube. I'm trying to give back good karma. I got here because I was able to watch videos from content creators who were relaying real life experiences. And that gave me the courage to sell everything I own in America and hit the road, maybe not for Thailand necessarily. I was gonna keep my options open. I did do a lot of planning. Heck, I even got a second citizenship from an island in the Caribbean, which I'm gonna do videos about how you go about buying a second citizenship I can tell you right now, I spent about $120,000 on it. But you don't own your passport. The United States government does. When England said nobody from the U.S. can come to England because of the situation, you were stuck. But I wouldn't have been if I wanted to go because I have another passport and I'm a citizen of another country that wasn't blocked. And if the U.S. gets into a situation where it says they don't want their people to travel, your passport's canceled. You don't own it. So I don't want to put myself in a situation where I'm locked in. So I bought that second passport, which gives me the option, by the way, to live in any of 20 countries without any paperwork if I want to live in the East Caribbean, which isn't all bad either. That's going to be another set of videos. If you find any value from this video, hey, like and subscribe and share because the more I give away information, the better my karma is, hey, I wouldn't be here now if people didn't share what they knew. Hey, I wouldn't be here now if they hadn't shared on YouTube their experiences, which gave me the courage and the determination to change my life and see the world. So with that said, let's start showing you some of the footage I shot for my 12 hour excursion to Laos from Bangkok and the 
trials and tribulations of sport. I don't even know what you call it. Sport Rama, musical chairs, punch your ticket. There's got to be a game for this somehow or the other because it's always a trip getting this done. I would imagine the amount of experience gained from some of these people who said we've been to 47 countries, they really have gotten a lot of experience in handling these passport issues and visa issues because experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. And believe me, these passports have given me a lot of experience so far. So let's get to the trip and let's do it. Today's January 16th. This is how my passport looked at the end. It was an EDU passport that had been extended from October 26th and good to January 26th. The problem is they, wasn't, they would not renew or transfer. They would not transfer from this type of passport to an O visa. So I arranged a flight leaving at 8.10 a.m. from Don Mung Airport in Bangkok to Viet Tien in Laos. And I said, well, okay, I'll go there and then I'll come back. Well, here it is. It's in the morning. It's about 8.10. But let me digress a little bit. It took me an hour to get there. So I really got up about 4.45 in the morning. I had made arrangements for a taxi to come to the condo at 5.15. It takes about an hour to get from my condo to Don Mung Airport by taxi. There's other ways to get there. I could go by MRT to a rail line, then a rail line out, but that's an hour also. It's just a lot of walking, dragging your carry-on, and a lot more trouble. Not that much less expensive. So I elected to get up at 445. Then when I got there, I needed a boarding pass. At least I thought I did. I actually didn't need one. But I decided to get the boarding pass. I stood in this long line of people until somebody said, well, if, if you've already pre-checked in, you can go over to these kiosks, and you can get a boarding pass from the kiosks. Well, they were useless because after I put my booking number in and everything, it told me to go get back in line. So I had to go get back in line again and wait through the line, get a booking pass or a boarding pass, and then I could go up to then I could go up to the Thai immigration inspection where they look at your passport and stamp you out of the country and make sure that you didn't overstay. And I spent about 25 minutes with this lady here in the picture on the right. By the way, you aren't supposed to take pictures. I found that out when the person behind me tapped me on the shoulder and said, you can't take pictures here. So anyway, this lady and the lady next to, next to her spent 20 minutes trying to decide what in the heck is he doing leaving his EDU visa. And if he leaves it like this, the visa is not going to extend. He's going to be without an EDU visa, which he's still got another six months on or so. So uh, I tried to explain to him that I'm trying to leave the country to get away from the EDU visa because the people at the immigration will not switch from an EDU directly to an O retirement type visa. So they went back, talked to supervisors and everything else, and eventually they stamped me out of the country uh, so that I could get on my way to Laos. Okay, after leaving the passport inspection area, then you go through security where you normally in the U.S. have to take your shoes off. Well, at Don Mung Airport, they don't make you take your shoes off. They do make you take your laptop out. You have to take your phones and your watches off and everything out of your pockets and, uh, and that sort of thing and put them into the inspection area 
they even make you take your wallet and go through the x-ray with your wallet. But at least you didn't have to take your shoes on. And I will say that it is very fast. I wasn't able to take pictures of, of the actual security area because there were signs up all over, no pictures taken. And I wasn't going to try to break the law on purpose. So I'm showing you a picture of a passport, which is the reason why all this was was necessary. But I would have to say that Bangkok, Dongmong Airport's uh, pre-boarding security system is efficient. Uh, you do go through the body scanners and everything like that. The people were very fast, very helpful, very nice. Uh, if you if, if you ever think that Dongmong Airport versus the BKK Big Airport is substandard, you're wrong. It it really is a pretty nice place. Now. After I left the uh, security, I went upstairs and I found this fantastic Priority Pass lounge. Had some food. The food wasn't uh, fantastic, but they had some pastries. It was early in the morning. The iced coffee was pretty good. I stayed there a while, and then I left, and then I saw this little thing. I couldn't help but resist. It had a little smiley face on it. it it's sort of like a rumba or an iRobot for your house, and it's just going up and down these long corridors, trying to sweep up and find things, and move. it moves around people, so it didn't run me over. When I got closer to the gate, I checked the big signs out, which look a little different than they do at home. But you look for your, your flight number, and uh, it will tell you what gate you're in. When I got closer to the gate, I took a plane and took a picture of the outside of the A320, Airbus 320. And then I came upon Gloria Jean's Coffees. And I didn't realize that franchise was started in the United States, but it's now Australian-owned, and they're in like 39 countries with over... 2,000 locations, and it was like Gloria Jeans, really? Now, here I'd like to help in the comments. Look at that little, like, rope-like thing that's around the wheels, and that's around the wheels of the ramp that goes out to the plane, and sort of, like, hangs on one side of the wheel there, and I was just wondering... Does anybody really know what that's for and what that's about? Maybe it's just to keep you away from it, or, or I've never noticed that before anywhere else, but it caught my attention. I said, okay, fine. So finally they let you in the plane, and it's a three-by-three three with one center aisle situation, the A320. The knee room on this plane, I'm short-legged. I'm so short-legged, you wouldn't believe it. But the knee room on this plane is almost non-existent. Even short people don't have any leg room on this plane. The seats are narrow, but I did get my big butt in them. I was really proud of that. I can't imagine how I got in there. But uh, we're sitting here waiting for pushback in this seat. And then I noticed that AirAsia has advertising on their overhead bins for a drip coffee called Arabis. Now, I shot this video as we were going on our, actually, this is probably the, uh, the uh, taxiway, and I'm shooting this from the aisle seat, looking across a couple people, and putting the high focus out the window with my iPhone 14 Pro Max and hand-holding it, so that's why the shot shakes a little bit. And you can notice that the uh, definition on the camera is so good, it picks up all the little scratches on the actual plexiglass window. Because those are windows in, the, in there are more plastic than they are glass. Now we're on the takeoff run, and we're actually rolling down the, the runway, getting ready to pick up a little speed and get off the ground. And believe me, by this time,
Bangkok. Here's an interesting little picture. I saw a person wearing long corduroy pants and the temperature was somewhere around 90 degrees. This is a small picture I took in Laos. Their cigarette advertising <laughs> stands out, smoking kills. So we're now in Laos and I'm sitting at a souvenir, in front of a souvenir stand at a little coffee shop, waiting to, for boarding information. And they don't post it before it's necessary. Like usually you'll get a lot of posting in an American airport about what gate a plane's going to be at and so forth. They don't do that here. Here I, th I found a little interesting shot. I'm sitting there waiting for them to post something up about boarding. I see this little thing. It looks like, looks like a bunch of little leaves walking back and forth on the window, but they're actually trying to clean the outside of the window with a strange looking, it looked like they took palm leaves and tied them at the end of a stick or something. I don't know what that was all about. Eventually they posted up that this was going to leave at 2.30 in the afternoon, this flight. And you had all these people standing around for about 20 minutes before they would do anything. But before that, it was a ghost town there. Nothing was on the board. And here, this was interesting. They, they post zones on your boarding pass. You're in zone one, zone two, zone three for boarding. They called all the zones at the same time. You could see the line going to infinity. So I said, heck with that. I'm just going to sit here and wait till the line disappears and just be the last one to get in the plane if I have to. Now here's a landing shot coming up coming back into Don Mung Airport, and you notice the hazy look right above the clouds. That's the haze layer and the temperature inversion layer that exists over Bangkok all the time. Now coming up soon, you're gonna see a shot where the plane had to bank about 90 degrees and tilted this window up high in the air. And what was really interesting is you see the picture you're getting now. You're looking through the temperature inverted haze layer, or some people would call it smog or whatever you want to call it. But when this, when this plane banks to the right, this wind is going to start pointing way up high in the atmosphere. And when it does, you're going to see just how beautiful it is if you look above this haze layer rather than down into the haze layer. That should come up anytime now really soon. Now I'm doing the narration of this post-production. So you can see where right now I even put up that this is the worst of the haze layer. But as soon as this plane starts to bank, you're gonna see some, right now, here comes the bank. And look at that beautiful blue sky. Once you get above that haze layer, it's gorgeous here. And by the way, it looks like there's clouds every day in Bangkok. But in the non-rainy season, those clouds are for display only. It never hardly ever rains in the non-rainy season. They look like you could rain every day. Now this is being shot from my aisle seat going out the other side of the plane on approach. And this city just goes for miles. I mean, it's, it's huge. Very, very large. So, let's see what else we got coming up here. We're getting close to the end of the video, I guess. But by this time, it's now about 3.15 in the afternoon on the way back. By the way, the trip from VTN Lao back to Bangkok is shorter because they fly a direct route. In this case, they were taking off towards the south, making a very small turn and heading directly to it. On the way from Don Mung Airport in Bangkok towards VTN in Laos, they flew a northerly path uh, 
a northerly route about 360 degrees. And then they flew north of the capital of Laos, made a right-hand turn, came back around and landed to the south, which takes extra time, of course. Here you're starting to see when they're getting really close to the ground. Gears out now. And uh, it's rather turbulent because the temperature is about 90 degrees, 89, 90 degrees. And as it's getting close to the ground, you're getting bumped around a little bit. That's, that's why I couldn't even keep the camera steady. It's just best you could do to hold it like that to shoot across the aisle and out the window using the zoom. But you can just see that it's just so, so busy. It's much more crowded. Than, for example, going into uh, Greater Cincinnati International Airport, there's not, you don't see as much around in northern Kentucky where that's located. Now, once you get below the haze there, this is the same shot. Once you're below the haze, though, look how much brighter it looks. I mean, much better. Finally got on the ground. And like always, they park at the gate a, a gazillion miles away from where you need to be. Well, we finally got back through the uh, customs or the immigration, and I got my stamp for 45 days from January 16th through March 1st of 2023. Now, the attorney now has my passport. Now, this is something interesting. When you want to go get a taxi at this airport, they send you to a queue line who gives you a ticket. And with that ticket, you end up getting a taxi, and you have to pay 50 baht extra because you came from the airport of whatever the meter says. And that's what the ticket says you have to pay 50 baht for. But the taxis are all lined up with their trunks open, and the, the drivers are... Uh, are standing by where that queue is and they take your paper and escort you to the taxi. They turn on the meter and they take you to where you want to go. And I thought it was going to take two hours to get back because it was 4 p.m. traffic. But in reality, it only took an hour and 10 minutes, which was amazing because for for, for what I could tell, all the traffic was always on the other side of the street. So going in towards towards Bangkok, it probably made way better time coming from Don Mung Airport, which is farther than I would have came if I would have left from Bangkok International, the BKK Airport. I made much better time, an hour and 10 minutes. Heck, at, at five o'clock in the morning, it, it was uh, 55 minutes. So I really did well on the way home. That's it for this video. If you ever want to make a Bangkok to Lao border run, this is what it takes to go through it. Have a nice day. Thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe.